Lumix S9 is the joke of the century. <laughs> Lumix S9, Lumix S9. All the influencers and the YouTubers compromise themselves. And I want to share with you my thoughts about Lumix S9 and what is with this camera. So let's talk about this now. Hi there, Tudor Matescu here. One thing is for sure good about Lumix S9. Lumix S9 show to you who are the people that are making reviews about cameras, about photography cameras, but also about cameras that are dedicating to videography and to vlogging. I don't know where to start because there are many, many laughable points regarding Lumix S9 and I don't know if it's the fault of Lumix S9 or of the marketing from the Panasonic Lumix, but there are many, many problems regarding this camera, many problems. It's not affordable, first of all, for what you get, because I really don't know what you get there. It's a mix of salad where you don't get anything usable on the long term and also on the short term, but it's all packed in the idea that you have a small full frame camera that will kill X106, XT50, that wow, it's having lots and all kinds of jokes, jokes like this. Well, when I'm looking at Lumix now, Fuji, it's a titan. Fuji, <laughs> Fuji, it's, a, it's the best. When I'm looking at Lumix, Fujifilm is the best. Sony is the best. Canon, Nikon are the best producers out there. When I'm looking at S9, I'm not talking about the other cameras that I'm really loving. But Lumix S9, it's a really, really joke because I can't call it otherwise because there are many, many, many problems. And I really don't think that a TikToker or a new generation content creator does know nothing about photography and about videography to buy in such a joke. And let's start with the points. The first point is that the influencer. The influencers are really a problem and Lumix S9 showed us who are the influencers and showed us who are the people that are making content about cameras and photography gear. I think it's unacceptable that they've accepted to review such a camera in a nice tone. This is not a camera that you can review in a nice tone. Probably the best tone that you can have regarding this camera, it's a laughable tone, a joke tone, because other than that, the camera, it's nothing, nothing in photography and nothing in videography and nothing in colors because you have LUTs. What kind of LUTs? Lumix does have the knowledge of Fujifilm cameras in LUTs? No, they don't have it. You have the knowledge of a film simulation camera in Fujifilm? No, you don't have it. Sony doesn't have it. So let's start with the photography aspect of Lumix S9 that was presented to us as an alternative to X106. What a joke! To XT50, what a joke! And this is the most important thing. The most crucial important thing if you want to know and if you want to make photography. You don't have there a mechanical shutter and also you don't have there a fast global shutter or a very, very good electronical shutter that could assure you that you will not have bending, warping and flickering in your photography. I have here Sony A7C. Now, this is a real camera. This camera has a real mechanical shutter. And when I'm using the electronic shutter, I get bending, I get warping for fast moving scenes, I get flickering and so on. Also, this is the case with Sony A7R 3A and other full frame cameras. This is why you need a mechanical shutter for photography. So because you don't have a mechanical shutter and I will not talk about the other essential things for photography. But if you don't have a mechanical shutter or a global shutter to assure you that you will not have bending, warping and flickering in your photos, the camera is useless for photography. Of course, you can make a still shot. Of course, you can make a selfie. But this is it. In 80% of the cases, you don't want to put so much money in a camera that doesn't have a mechanical shutter and compare this camera to an X100 V or 6. So this is a joke, an influencer joke of a marketer that is not on this planet because can't compare Lumix S9, a camera without a mechanical shutter, to a true camera. We had Sigma FP. Why doesn't Sigma FP is not used by photographers? Why it's not used? Also, we have ZVE1. 
a camera dedicated to vloggers with 12 megapixels. Sony did it right, 12 megapixels for having light in your video and you can still make pictures. So I can't criticize the V1 because it's not marketed like a photographer's camera. You have A7C, A7CR and other Sony full frame cameras. Okay, so no mechanical shutter, no photography for you. If you want to buy this camera, thinking that you'll replace X106 or XT50 or other small capable full frame camera. But if you want to buy it so I can buy my X106, please buy it because the influencers told you so. Next, you don't have any EVF. Okay, okay, no EVF, okay. I will not enter into the details. When it's sunny out there, okay, take pictures how you know to take it. Next, you don't have a hot shoe. You don't have a hot shoe. So you don't have a mechanical shot. You just have a cold shoe. So you can't connect a real flash. You can't connect another accessory for photography. It's a totally, totally deal breaker. On Sony ZV-1 or other Sony cameras, you have a hot shoe and you have a microphone from Sony that can connect through the hot shoe and you'll not have any wire on you. This is something that will really help you in video because we'll talk at the video part. The camera is small, no grip and a flip screen, of course, because it's a content creation camera. Okay, but no mechanical shutter, no EVF, no hot shoe mount. So a totally deal breaker. It's useless that you have there a full frame sensor. It's totally, totally useless. Now I will address also here the LUTs. Useless, useless. You don't have the Fujifilm color science. Sony tried it. They are far away from Fujifilm. I love the Lumix colors. I'm praising the Lumix colors. I'm really loving them. They make a great job. Lumix GX9 and other cameras, more than full frame cameras, great colors but you must know to make a lot and you must know to make a lot that will work in any lighting condition this is where a film simulation a true film simulation like on fujifilm has no competitor the film simulations and i'm not talking about the recipes just the baking film simulations that can be easily adjust will work in any lighting conditions for you this is true film simulation here a lot that is not well made. Let's think about this. Fujifilm, it's praising their color science because they have many, many years of film experience and of colors. If you are just a content creator, even like me, if you have some experience with color, like an experienced medium user, I bet you'll not be able to make a lot like a Fujifilm is making a film simulation. So the LUTs are good, they are there, but it's not enough. Also, you have this on Nikon ZF and other Nikon cameras with picture control. Again, far, far away from Fujifilm. So I would really advise influencer, my complaints not towards Lumix, to not compare a LUT or a Nikon image control to a film scene. When a company will decide to invest years and years in developing a color science, a film simulation color science, or anyway, a simulation, a color simulation like Fujifilm did, then there is another discussion. But if you offer the user the control to work with the LUTs or with some settings, it's not enough. It's not enough. You need their color profile that it's working anyway. Not enough. Just a gimmick on the long term. You can be thrilled on the short term, but on the long term, my point of view, it's just a gimmick. And again, this is not the real problem. Now, let's talk about the video specs of this camera. So first of all, you have a flip screen so you can film yourself. I'm not entering the specs, I'm just talking about the ergonomics. Because a camera that it's designed to film yourself with a flip screen without a grip, and what lens you put there? What lens do you will put there to film yourself? The 26 mm f8, fixed f8, no blurry background, no chance of controlling the light, and it's not a very usable field of view. Next, you have crop modes in 4K 60p and in other modes. So you'll have a very, very tight field of view. So it's a camera that you can't vlog with it. Why choose this camera? Why choose at F8? At F8, you lose any full frame ability of having the subject separated to the background. So why would you do that? Better choose a Micro Four Thirds camera, better choose an APS-C camera or other dedicated camera like ZV-E10 or other cameras. So 
the lens and the ergonomic of the body, it's nothing for video, nothing. It's not important that you have IBIS. So what? That IBIS, it's nothing because you have nothing that will help you make video. The only good thing is that you have a microphone jack. So on that small camera, add a big microphone on the cold shoe and hold that camera with IBIS to film yourself with a 26 mm pancake lens kept at F8 without any filter mount that you could put on that lens. So all it's really, really a joke. I can't enter into all the details because all are jokes, are really, really jokes. Lumix is not even a concept, is not even proof of concept that we can make a small full-frame camera capable full-frame camera. Already Sigma did this and I feel that Sigma FP did it better than Lumix S9. Did it better because you know for what is that camera, you know what to expect from that camera, you know how to build a rig around that camera and you have the right expectations. What kind of expectation you have from Lumix S9? A very expensive, very expensive camera for what it is. Basically, you just buy a box with a full frame sensor and on that box, you can't rig it up. Sigma FP did it better. Did it better because you can rig up that box, that Sigma FP. So it's a modular design. Lumix S9 is not even a modular design. It's a very limited, limited design. And they are asking this price. Why pay this price when you can buy ZV-E1, ZV-E10 and other usable cameras or any other camera that is usable on the short term, but also on the medium term. Now regarding the weight, I'm seeing Panasonic weights 486 gram and ZV-E1 weights 483 grams so and zve1 it's a truly camera dedicated for vlogging and for photography i can't blame it on uh, sony because they've used on the zve1 an electronic shutter because the camera it's well marketed it's well targeted it's about having a clear message what is the clear message of s9 what kind of creators do you think those creators were born under the rock? Do you think that those creators don't know nothing about the bending, about warping? You think those creators have so much money to pay a box and they didn't use yet a camera, they just use a mobile phone and now because they've heard from somewhere that a full frame camera is out there, that it's small, uh, they will buy it. Even if they will buy it, even if you will fool the market, the market will find out the problems, we'll find out about the overheating, we'll find out about the video recording limits, we'll find out about the flickering and the bending, and you'll just have a furious crowd that felt that you've lied to them. You've lied to them. So for me, Lumix S9, it's a joke. And I'm sorry for Lumix, I'm sorry for Panasonic, and I'm sorry for the managers and for the marketing team who had this bad idea. And I'm also sorry for the influencer who sold their souls to promote a camera like this. This is really, really a joke and uh, I can't recommend to anyone to buy such a camera. This camera, it's a mistake. It's a totally, totally mistake. You don't buy a full-frame camera to shoot it with a small F8 fixed <laughs> lens. No, you don't, you don't do that. So you'll use bigger lenses. Let's take it like this. Okay, you don't look at the lens. Full-frame sensor. I will buy an F2.8 zoom lens. This is Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8 full frame the smallest i would say the smallest f 2.8 because you want some light full frame zoom full frame zoom think about a zoom like this that has around 400 and plus grams on your lumix s9 so you have one kilogram with a small camera without grip without any balance and with the crops you just film your head it's silly. It's really silly. So a joke and a bad joke, if you are asking me. I'm sorry, Lumix, that you did this. I don't know who fooled you to make such a camera. And even so, this is not the real problem. My question is who fooled all those influencers to review such a camera and to baby it and to show to the public that it's not a bad camera. It's Lumix S5 II and so on. No. No, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. This is my point of view. And if you want the truth about camera gears, photography tips and tricks, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a like. Share my video to your friends so many users will know what is with this camera. 
Till then, please check mine. Next videos, leave me your comments and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.